All right, welcome to the review of how to drive velocity as a function of time for an object in free fall whose uh, resistive force is proportional to the velocity. Um, derive, remember, has a very specific meaning on the AP test. You're going to begin with one or more fundamental equations without numbers filled in, and then you're going to clearly apply mathematics to arrive at the desired result. So in this case, the fundamental equation that we're going to start with is the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. And so we've got the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration as our starting point, and you've got a free body diagram. So let's add up those forces. Force of gravity is in the positive direction. The force of drag is in the negative direction. That equals mass times acceleration. Force of gravity we know is mg. Force of drag, this force is proportional to the velocity. So we have a constant times the velocity equals mass times acceleration. And then to write a differential equation, we're going to replace acceleration with the time derivative of velocity. So nothing changes on the left side. On the right side we have m dv dt. We're going to get dv dt alone, so divide everything by m All right, so this is the result after dividing our equation by m, g minus kv over m equals dv dt. This is a differential equation because we have a function, v, that we're trying to solve for that's equal or related to uh, its own derivative, okay? So when you have a function that's related somehow to its own derivative, that is a differential equation. In this case, it's a first-order differential equation because the function v is related to its first derivative. A second order differential equation would be a function v who's related to its own second derivative. Our goal now is to get v, the v that's on the left, not the dv, get the v on the left to be positive and with no coefficient in front of it. So I want to get just a positive v, which means I need to factor out this negative k over m right there. So we factor out negative k over m, and we think about what that's going to leave us with. It's going to leave us with a negative g, m on the top, and a k on the bottom. Think about distributing back in. When you multiply these, you should get just a positive g back again. And our next term is going to be plus v. And the right side of the equation remains unchanged, dv dt. Always a good idea to make sure you did this correctly. Double check. When you multiply these, do you get g back again? When you multiply these, do you get negative kv over m? Yes. It all checks out. So now that we have that factored out, I'm just going to rewrite our equation. Negative k over m. Flip these around. So we have v minus gm over k equals dv dt. The next step is to separate the variables which basically means we're going to move dt over to the left, and we're going to divide by g uh, by v minus gm over k. So those two terms get flipped. Basically, this is going to move down here, and this is going to move up here. They flip-flop. 
and that's what our equation looks like after we flip-flop. Our next step is going to be to integrate both sides of this, left side with respect to time, right side with respect to velocity, and uh, then carry out the integration and solve for V. So here's the equation that we had from the previous slide. We're going to integrate both sides now. On the left side, we integrate from time 0 to some later time t. And on the right side, we integrate from velocity 0, because we dropped this from rest. So at time 0, we have velocity 0. So those match up. The lower limits match up. The upper limits are also going to match up. At some time t, we're going to have a velocity of v at some later time. So we'll carry out the integration here. And remember, once you have integrated, you still need to show the limits of integration and then plug in and continue to solve. So on the left side, when we integrate, we get minus k over m t and the limits here are from 0 to t on the right side we get the ln the natural log of the stuff that's on the bottom which is v minus gm over k and we're doing this from 0 to v. The next step is plug in the top. So I'm going to take this t, plug it in. We get minus k over m t. And then we have to subtract from that the value that we get when we plug in the bottom, 0 to t. Well, when we plug in 0 to t, we just get zero. So that works out to be a zero on the left side. That will not work out on the right side. On the right side, we start by replacing v with v. So the initial uh, expression will be the same. ln of v minus gm over k. And then we have to subtract from that the value that we get when we plug in zero for v. When we plug in 0 for V, we're still left with negative GM over K inside of our natural log. So we're still going to have ln of negative GM over K. Now we have two logs on the right side. We can combine these using the properties of logs. And remember, if you have the ln of x minus the ln of y, that will become the ln of x over y. So I'm going to apply that property and rewrite our expression on the next slide. So this is what we're left with after we apply that property of logarithms and do our division. You might be tempted to simplify some of the inside of the logarithm right now don't it'll work itself out in just a moment rather than simplifying what we're going to do is um, move the ln to the other side effectively bringing the other side as e to the negative kt over m for the exponent and now the log is gone from the right side and we have v minus gm over k divided by negative gm over k. We're going to solve for v now. Just two more steps left. I'm going to multiply this entire right side by negative gm over k. And I'm going to multiply the left side by negative gm over k. That will cancel out on the right side and the left side now is negative gm over k times e to the negative kt over m 
power, and that's equal to V minus GM over K. And then we have one more step of addition here. We're going to add GM over K to each side, and I'll do that on the next slide. So here's where we left off. We're going to add GM over K to both sides. And that pretty much solves the equation for V. Let's rewrite it now. We have GM over K minus GM over K E to the negative KT over M equals velocity. And that now is our velocity as a function of time. An alternative way of writing this is gm over k, you can factor that out and be left with 1 minus e to the negative kt over m equals velocity as a function of time. Either way of writing that is fine. And you should be able to go through this process start to finish without being given any information to start off drawing the free body diagram on your own and get all the way to this ending uh, equation. So, there you go. Study up for Wednesday.